So, Russell and Ed, uh, you've just released the best of album called Black Gold. Is this an ending or is this a beginning? Uh, it's certainly not an ending. I mean, we feel pretty fresh as a band. Um, feel like we're doing stuff that we're excited about, and which has always been the case throughout our career. But to be able to look back and, you know, go through our six records that we've got so far and cherry pick songs that people will want to listen to in a, in a sort of, con in like a, a joined up fashion and to make a record out of it with beautiful artwork and uh, extra bits like the acoustic album that we've put together with it, it just felt like an opportunity that we couldn't turn down. So why is now the right time to do this? Um, I think it bookmarks a point where we've, we've done six albums. Yeah, just to, just to sum it up, it's, it's a good, good summary and it lets people into the band and shows them what we've done up to this point. You can imagine that process of you know going through and picking songs for this. What is it like when you're selecting tracks for a best of? Because every time I see a best of compilation for a band that I love, I'm always thinking, hang on, what's that one doing on there? You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. what, what's the process like? But I, th I think that's part of the point. And you, you know, everybody can put together their own best of for the bands that they love. Um, but for us to sort of select some tracks that are important to us along the way that sort of highlight the journey that we've we've had as a band, um, sort of. It's quite single driven, I suppose, which is a nod to sort of our sort of the stuff that we've done in the UK. We want to kind of start a conversation about us, I guess. You know, we want people to sort of realise, oh, they've got a very big catalogue, mm -hmm. big back catalogue, and uh, go back and, um, and and sort of make their own d decisions about what they want to hear and put together their own um, their own best ofs in a way as well. Well, let's talk a little bit about the journey that you've been on. Tell us, first of all, how the band met in the first place. Uh, we met at Staffordshire University. I, well, I actually met Ed, Ed on Open Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was one, one of the, uh, the factors of me deciding to go to that university. We all wanted to do music technology, we wanted to be involved in music, but uh, didn't know exactly how to do that. So doing a degree in it, we thought would make sense. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we just, we just met each other started jamming. It was a remote and he thought, yeah, you know what, we're actually good. You know, we could do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know when you wrote Munich, for example, that, you know, oh, this is this is going to be a hit, this is going to be a big one? Uh, I think we all did, actually. Yeah, it was, it was, it was fast, that, it? that one song, it happened so quickly as well. I said, I've got a bass line. Chris said, I've got a guitar line. And I remember just playing it in our lounge, which we never usually ever did. I think that's the only time that we ever did that. <laughs> um, and uh, so, oh yeah, that, that just works. Uh, then went into the rehearsal room and straight off the bat, I think it was like... It was immediate. It was immediate. It, was, it didn't change. Never changed. Nothing think, else changed. Know, people talk about simplicity in music. That's kind of what it was. You just you knew what to do. You didn't have to mess about a bit too much. Where did the all-black uniform come from? Uh, just from dreadful fashion taste before. <laughs> Let's confirm we're all wearing black at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, big big blue jeans and uh, orange tops had to go. <laughs> didn't didn't work. <laughs> in the early days, and you were talking about you know kind of the music that was going when you were starting out, people like the Strokes and all that kind of stuff. But in the early yeah. days of the band, you know, anytime you were spoken of in the media, you tended to be lumped in with Interpol and with Joy Division. How did mm. you feel about that at the time? That was all right. I mean, Interpol were definitely a, a big influence on Chris. They excited him about guitar music again. Uh, as, as well as the yeah yeah yes, I mean that guitar style. I think mm. he, you could you could say that really influenced him. The songwriting, I think, for the way that Tom writes, it, not so much. We hadn't really heard much of Joy Division until all the labels started saying, "Oh, you sound like Joy Division. You sound like Joy Division." You know, you get given these like, "Okay, I can see the resemblance there." Yeah, it got kind of got deep in that. People go, "Oh, you, but then you sound like the Chameleons." Yeah, oh, really? and you, you, you do get sort of tagged along with that. Like, well, we'd never heard of them before we started the band. But did it get to a point where it was a comparison that you just wanted to shake off? You know, can we get rid of this comparison now? Uh, yeah, it took about six albums. <laughs> <laughs> and are we even there yet? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a happy, sad element to it, which I think we've always yeah. tried to tap into as well. You know, you, you think of the bands that we've, that everybody enjoys in, from British music, you think of like The Cure or Radiohead, someone like that. There is that um, positive, negative juxtaposition, you know? We try to, we try to sort of 
get that within our songs as well. You get that strange balance between euphoria on one sense and melancholy on another. I mean, you get that in lots yeah. of music, and that's that's always a sweet spot, you know, when you can get that just right. That that's exactly. something that really exactly. deeply connects. Because you you want to you want to feel the music, don't you? Especially with a band like us, where there are lyrics. There's not it's not just dance music, but there's a combination of the two. You want to you want to feel emotionally engaged. Do you still have the hunger of that young band in 2002? It definitely changes. I mean, uh, you, your age does that to you as well. Yeah. We, we started out when we were 21, now we're late 30s. So just things do change. I think, I think artistic hunger is probably the way to describe it that we've got now. I mean, before it was hunger to get out there and actually play gigs all over the world and experience new things as well as, you know, the songs that Tom's written. But now we're more of a sort of an in, uh, integrated band, I suppose, and everybody's got an opinion, and everybody wants to sort of make their impact on it, and that, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. You sort of, you, everybody's trying to get better at it and, and be as perfect as possible. So what's the goal now? Aston Villa to win, 2-0. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> just to, to carry on, I, we, I, this is what I mean. <laughs> we want to carry on. <laughs> Uh, keep, keep calm and carry on. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do a new record, and we don't know how it's going to sound at the moment, but, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's next on the agenda, of course. Well, Ed and Russell, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for joining us on the programme. Thank Cheers, you very much, man. indeed. Thank See you. you.